Day one of free agency certainly didn't disappoint, and I want to go through these signings so far. Obviously, the night is not done, but I want to take a look at these signings, do some reaction and, and how I think these players are going to fit with teams and re-signs and all those sort of things. Also, I plan on doing a mock draft here in a few days. Just want to let free agency get rolling a little bit. I don't want to do mock Monday, man, because it's so ever-changing at this moment. Anyway, let's get on to the free agency portion and start off with the Buffalo Bills. They bring in Mitchell Trubisky. I like that. A two-year deal. Got to have a backup. Always important to have. Deion Dawkins at first. I thought they were going to cut him. I'm like, what? What are they doing? They're going crazy. But no, they gave him an extension. Well earned. He was phenomenal this season, arriving his 2020 year. Deion Dawkins, just around $20 million per season, three-year extension. They also got back David Edwards a few days ago. Nice two-year extension as well. I'm fine with that. He's an, He was a nice. He's throwing up lanes, man. He's a good run blocker. And then you got A.J. Ebenezer, who they re-signed today. I love this one a lot, especially with Von Miller at this point in his career. I thought, I thought A.J. Ebenezer was a really nice pass rusher for them this season. I think he can continue to get better. And I'm not saying he's going to be a 10-plus sack guy, but I definitely think he can be a 7-10 to 10 sack guy for this team to pair along with your number one in Greg Rousseau. And then Cam Lewis, versatility. He can play slot, can play safety. He can play anywhere. And I think he's going to at least compete for that free safety role this year with Micah Hyde being a free agent and obviously losing Jordan Poyer as well. Taylor Rapp, they also bring on, bring in on a three-year deal. It was a relatively cheap deal. He can be that strong safety for them. And, I mean, it's not a, it's an okay sign. I think it was fine. So, overall, he's got some safety depth slash corner depth, too, with Cam Lewis, as we're talking about. So far with the Buffalo Bills, I, I'm not going to give them, like, an extraordinary grade, but they've done what they needed to do. It's like a B-plus for me at the moment. On to the Miami Dolphins. They've had a very quiet free agency thus far and obviously for money purposes they don't have a ton of cap but John who Smith is coming in here with that speed you know they love speed so I, I think it's a good fit overall two years 10 million dollars I mean John Smith with Arthur Smith is you know as an uber productive last year and I expect him to be a nice 300 500 yard tight end for the team and it'll definitely be something they add in here uh you know I think it's it's definitely needed I'll say that and then Anthony Walker linebacker I love this one he probably is on like a vet minimum deal and they need linebacker help especially with Baker gone now and you, you put in Walker there I think he'll be as long as he can stay healthy he's a really good linebacker he's a very good leader too, calling plays and stuff like that so I like that that was a really good move especially if the contract is around that vet minimum and then Nick Needham I like him a lot he's just dealt with injuries you know still trying to get get fixed and get right but he's a nice player who can also play on the outside play in the slot and at least give you some competition with Cater Coho hopefully he gets fully healthy this season and is ready to go Overall, nice, solid, you know, free agency. Once again, no big signs, but they do what they needed to do with filling some key areas on some depth for their roster. Going back to the Dolphins, I did a little update after this, and they signed Jordan Brooks to a three-year deal, so they were not done with Anthony Walker. You sign Jordan Brooks to a three-year, $30 million contract. All right, let's go. Okay, you got Jordan Brooks in there, who is a really good linebacker. Love this move. I thought he was going to be more expensive, too. I'm shocked the Seahawks did not re-sign him for that price point. Like, that is a good deal. $10 million, I thought he was going to fetch like 14 plus. So to get Jordan Brooks, one of the more athletic linebackers, two in the NFL, with Anthony Walker, like I'm feeling good that their linebacking core is going to be way improved. On to the New England Patriots, and they got running back Antonio Gibson on a three-year deal. I'm fine with this one. He'll be a nice rotational player with Ramondre Stevenson. Keep him fresh. You got to do that, and that's not a break-the-bank deal. Then you bring back Kendrick Bourne. Really nice sign in here not super expensive three years just under 20 million dollars there's obviously littered with ex with incentives which is fine too i mean if he earns those then that's great right i mean that's that's a win-win situation overall really solid number two number three receiver kendrick Bourne. good to keep around for whoever your quarterback is next season which that'll be interesting hunter henry three-year deal 27 million dollars i'm fine with that one too that's a nice solid contract i mean he was one of their best receivers this year so especially around the red zone so hunter henry good solid pickup there to bring him back. Chucks Akuma for from Pittsburgh. They cut him and the Patriots pounce. They sign him, which might be a signal that they're going to end up letting Michael on Wayne go, unfortunately. However, I, I like Chucks. I thought this was a really good steal. I know the Pittsburgh Steelers have an off the field issue. There was something going on there with Chucks. Overall, I think Chucks is getting better, and I do think he is, well, he might be a lower end starter. For the deal that they're probably signing into, it's very, very nice if you're getting that cheap right tackle contract. And I very much see him as a guy that 
I see him as a starter in the NFL. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that deal. And then Kyle Duggar transition tag. You got to do that, man. He's a stud. Patriots have been busy on the offense side of the ball. And for good reason, they have to improve the offense, especially if you're bringing a quarterback in. Now, on to the New York Jets and a very quiet free agency thus far. And not just to be a surprise. We'll see if they do anything, if they try to go after a Calvin Ridley. I know we're hearing news and rumors of that. But Isaiah Oliver from the Niners, no surprise. But, uh, you know, trying to pick off the Niners, who knows. But Greg the Leg, this was great. I'm glad they gave him an extension. He was such a solid kicker. So overall, it, we, it's too early to tell for the Jets. On to the AFC North, Baltimore Ravens. They go get Nelson Aguilar on a one-year extension. I love that. Cheap veteran minimum deals type of thing. Justin Matabuki gets that extension. And Matabuki is a really phenomenal interior player. Had a breakout season. So you give him that monster deal. Four years, $98 million, but a super young player. And he's going to be a foundation piece for them. Overall, they did what they need to do. They don't have a whole ton of money, so I'm not expecting a ton. You're going to have to go in and get budget guys, and that's fine, right? They've got a team that can compete. you got draft picks. I expect them to be in a pretty good spot. On to the Cincinnati Bengals, where it gets a little interesting. I know T. Higgins trade rumors, right? We shall see what happens there if he gets trade. We're seeing some trades already happening, but T. Higgins, um, a must situation. At least get it. If you can get a second round pick, I mean, you got to do at least that, right? Drew Sample back on a, a three-year deal. As long as that's not super expensive, I'm fine with that. He's a good, solid backup tight end that can block and stuff like that. So it's a nice, nice, keep him around, right? He was your draft pick as well. Cody Ford, one-year deal. Okay, it's fine. You know, it's depth. You need to upgrade your offensive line. Let's just say that, but you got to have depth. And then Geno Stone, two years, $15 million. This to me signals that they want to maybe put Dax Hill more in the box and the slot back again, which would be good. I think that'd be a good idea in a general sense because Dax and Hill, he is at his best covering one-on-one. -on -one. He wasn't super comfortable in the back end, had some coverage busts. He's a really good player. Like you put him one-on-one -on -one and he can cover Chris Godwins and he can cover those guys, man. He can st cover stud receivers. Like he has that ability and athleticism. So I like the signing and it wasn't super expensive. Didn't break the bank overall. I thought the Bengals have done a pretty solid job. On to the Cleveland. Cleveland Browns. This is an A plus type of off season for me. They have got Jerry Judy on a cheap trade. I get it. He's going into a contract year, but I mean, this to me is like an Amari Cooper situation. Super young player with immense amount of upside, and for the Broncos, basically in you know rebuild mode at this point, getting Judy for this type of deal. A plus. I love it, man. This is an awesome, one of my favorite moves so far uh, of free agency for the Cleveland Browns. A plus, A plus. I can't reiterate it enough. Great job, Cleveland. And yes, absolutely. Zedari Smith as well on a two year, $23.5 million max value of 25. He's a great number two pass rusher at this point in his career. Yeah, he might be just a pass rusher, and that's fine. Like Zedari Smith is a dangerous pass rusher to pair along with Miles Garrett. So I felt like they did a really good job this offseason. One of my winners, even though they only have two additional right now. Well, one re-sign and one addition, but I, I think the Browns have done a great job. On to the Berg, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they get Russell Wilson. It's time. Mr. Unlimited. <laughs> hey, I think that this was a great signing, and I think it's a perfect fit, too, because Arthur Smith and Mike Tomlin, I don't think they're going to bug him like, like the situation with Sean Payton. I think Tomlin's going to be very much like a Pete Carroll in that general sense. He's going to be that, that, you know, that cheerleader behind him that just kind of tries to bring that motivation, but isn't going to push him to, you know, make, you know, a lot of frustration like maybe Sean would. So I think that this is going to be a great marriage between the two. It's still too early to tell, but they brought him in on that league minimum or that veteran minimum deal, like $1.2 million or whatever. Good job. You at least have competition with Kenny Pickett. On to the Houston Texans and Dalton Schultz. Love this move to bring him back. You got to do that. Three years, $36 million. I mean, a little expensive, but I think he definitely earned that contract. Denico Autry earned this contract as well. Two years, $20 million. He's still playing at a high level. He's an older prospect, but only ha one year of that contract is guaranteed. And since they lost Jonathan Grenard, you got to have somebody else. And, and also, Autry can play inside out. He gives you that versatility in rush packages to move inside. But I think he'd be a nice pairing along with Will Anderson. You're going to still have to draft somebody, I would imagine, for the future here. Uh, you got Mike Ford, depth, slot, etc. can also play on the outside too, but Lonnie Johnson gives you some safety. Uh, also, cornerback depth as well. Fine. And they also get Jeff Akuda. You can tell, you know, they, they got a lot of free agents in that cornerback position. This is lining up to be a first, second round type of draft pick by, by my eyes. What I'm seeing, Jeffrey Akuda, one year, $4.25 million. That is worth up to $6 million. And I do think you can pencil him in as one of the starters opposite of Derek Stingley, but I would be shocked if they do not spend at least a day two pick at the cornerback position at the moment. You bring Fairbairn back, a good kicker on a three year extension. Really like that one. He was really 
solid. Updating the Houston Texans here, I noticed they got Aziz Al Jair from the, you know, you figure with the D'Amico Ryan's connections. They did let go of Blake Cashman. Overall, I like this a lot, man. You get Aziz Al Jair very familiar with the scheme and what D'Amico Ryan's going to want on a three year, $34 million. A very good linebacker to coming off a breakout season as a full time starter for the Tennessee Titans and you kind of stealing from the division as well. So I, I like that. That's a really good move. Kind of updates this for the Houston Texans. And we're talking about, I think they've done a really nice job thus far. The Indianapolis Colts in Chris Ballard fashion, he brings back his guys, right? That's what they do. And, and they brought Michael Pittman back on a three year, $70 million. I feel like he's worth every single penny. I love that move. Uh, Take one Lewis, a nice situational pass rusher, rotational player off the edge, can also give you inside out versatility. Jair Franklin, well deserved the raise, man. One of the better linebackers in the NFL. I mean, he is one of the most ferocious linebackers in the NFL as a tackler. So great offseason thus far by Chris Ballard, being real smart, bringing back his guys, bringing back the team, right? You got to bring back your core players. On to the Jaguars, where I've, I, you know, some hits and miss here. I've been a little, you know, a little bit iffy on Trent Balky and some of the, the moves he's making. And, and it's it's kind of the same feeling here for me with the Jaguars. I'm going to give them like a B minus C plus range. Mac Jones. I don't mind this one. For a six round pick, you get maybe yourself a long term backup behind Trevor Lawrence. Injuries happen and we, you know what you saw, you need to have a good backup. So I don't mind that move. That's fine. Um, Gabe Davis. Uh, it's okay. I, I just, I would shoot for a little bit higher if possible. Hey, look, Gabe Davis has more upside. I do think there's, he's super young where he's only 24, 25 and he's going to be, I think he'll fit with Trevor Lawrence's skill set on on the outside he'll throw those go balls and with that vertical speed I think Gabe Davis is a is a fun one to watch in this offense a max value of 50 million dollars three years though 39 million I'm gonna give that one like a C plus maybe he outperforms I know we were we were dogging on Christian Kirk that signing and look how it, it turned out I mean I still think it's expensive but Christian Kirk definitely worth the signing what he means to that team so maybe Gabe Davis is, it turns out to be like that too Blake Hens is some depth fine with that Ezra Cleveland you know I, I didn't it's an okay deal at least it's not super expensive and you can get out of this contract real quick it's only 14.5 million guaranteed and works out to be under 10 million a season Ezra Cleveland uh you know starting left guard I would imagine for them going into the season with that money and Mitch Morris starting center now I I think Luke Fortner maybe try to slide him over to guard or at least just be depth for a few seasons to learn behind Mitch Morris who knows what happens with Luke Fortner I know he was struggling so he's somebody that could even be a trade candidate after this who knows right or maybe they just say let's develop him a little bit longer but I love that signing Mitch Morris I thought on two year 10.5 million dollars he's still got plenty in the tank and he was really good for Buffalo once again this season Josh Allen the non-exclusive franchise tag you got to do that you got to work an extension out at some point please and then finally Darnell Savage I like this deal I will say I really do now it depends on how much money it is okay but I love the combination with Ryan Nielsen coming over here they're going to want a guy that I think Darnell Savage is going to provide more of a coverage element than what they had in Rayshon Jenkins. So I, I think the combination with Andre Sisco is going to be really, really fun to watch. So him in, in a Savage, I'm expecting some big things in Sisco and Savage. So I like that one as long as the deal isn't super crazy. You need to know exactly what the, you know, the fine prints on that overall. So I, I, I think, you know, it's a decent offseason thus far. Not something where I'm, I'm, I'm like super hyped up, but at the same time, I'm optimistic. I, I think they brought in some interesting guys. On to the Titans here. You bring Tony Pollard in on a three-year, $24 million. Okay. I mean, it's $8 million. That kind of seems like the going rate for that, you know, intermediate running back contract at this point. So you lose Derrick Henry more than likely at this point. I think that this was one of those where I, I wouldn't have personally done this. I would have kind of leaned towards the draft because I'm a big fan of Taji Spears. So I don't know if this was a priority sign for me, but at the same time, I think that Tony Pollard is a good running back and he still has a lot better days ahead of him. Still kind of getting, you know, at the end, you know, he was dealing with a bigger workload, trying to deal with that pass protection role. Here, he can be a nice rotational player with Taji Spears. Maybe get some more of that juice back from the broken foot, too. Still recovering from that last this past season, so not bad. And not, you know, I wouldn't call it an A plus signing, but it was a it was a solid move, I guess. Lloyd Cushenberry, I love this move though. Four years, fifty million dollars. He earned that contract and only twenty six million fully guaranteed. So it, it's not like crazy or anything like that. Plus, he's a phenomenal center. Had a breakout year. Was in that All Pro type of territory in my eyes. Really good good pass protector and that's what they need protect Will Levis and then you got Chidiobi Awuzie signing the three-year 36 million dollar deal I didn't love this one personally I think it's an okay signing and this was one we did though in the Titans one because 
I, I just didn't like the the maybe the long term of this and the guarantees that is twenty three million dollars guarantee, which tells me it's a two year extension. I would have liked a two year deal that was only like a one and a half type of deal. But at the same time, he is a good football player. The familiarity, of course, Brian Callahan, the Bengals bringing one. I mean, granted, he's offense, but I'm just saying, you know, that familiarity bringing over a Bengal, not a big surprise. Maybe DJ Reader's next. I, I think this was a nice move for them, but not one that I'm, I'm, I'm I could, there could be a little bit of bust potential with him getting a little bit older now. So that's my only concern with this. Again, it's only a two year guarantee type of deal. Morgan Cox, long snapper. You got to bring back your long snapper. Decent offseason. I love the Lloyd Cushenberry deal. On to the Denver Broncos, clearly in rebuild mode at the moment. But they do bring in Brandon Jones. I like that one. A three-year deal. They need secondary help pretty bad. They also re-signed P.J. Locke, who's a good player, I will say. And, and that was a cheap deal. If nothing else, I mean, that's a great rotational player to have on your in your in your locker room. Will Lutz did decide to stay here. Come in, he was going to the Jags, but decides to stay with Sean Payton. Overall, as I was saying, this team is clearly looking to the future. I'm just going to say that right now. I don't expect them to trade up for a quarter quarterback i really don't i don't know we shall see on to the Kansas city super bowl winning chief should i say they bring in chris jones back on a monster deal at first i was a little worried but it's a three-year deal guaranteed and even though jones getting a little bit older he is a phenomenal i mean he literally won them the super bowl in a way right i mean he's a disruptor through and through chris jones they run through him on that defense side of the ball and obviously the secondary you got to bring back jerry snee which they did and we are in tag trade rumors with him so we shall see if they come up with a long-term extension, but Legereus Sneed is a beast, at least getting him back on a, a tag, and, and if you trade him, then you're hoping that you get at least a second-round pick for him, if not more. Drew Tranquil, I love this one, three years, $19 million. He's a really good linebacker. I feel like he's an underrated linebacker, too, but they've got a great linebacking core, man. I imagine they're going to lose Willie Gay, though, with this signing, and that's okay. I think between Nick Bolton and, um, you know, uh, Leo Chanel, they're in a great spot, and now you have Drew Tranquil back, so they got three deep. The Chiefs did what they needed to do, and that's why I think this is a nice, solid B+. Plus. And they also bring back or bring in Matt Ariza, punter. So, yeah, league minimum. You got to have a punter, of course. And is it Tommy Townsend might be on his way out? Out at this point so who knows on to the las vegas raiders they made some splashes man first we start off with gardner Minshew. okay Minshew mania now heads over to vegas and this is gonna be a fun one i'm just gonna say that right now but a two-year 25 million dollar deal 15 guaranteed so that's at least one year guaranteed like a one and a half type of guaranteed situation so my guess is gardner Minshew and aoc are going to compete it out and they, you know that's what they're going to roll with i don't see them trading up for a quarterback at this point maybe they will who knows right this could be that thing where teams like oh, okay maybe they're not going to trade up but then they decide to trade up it's not gonna i'm not gonna rule it out at the same time i do think this is a signal that they're gonna feel pretty confident with either gardner Minshew or aiden o'connell at the starting quarterback position bring amir Odula back that's fine you know gives you some special teams capability as well andre james love that one he's been getting better and better i wouldn't say he's an elite center but he's a good center and a starter at that three years 28 million dollars doesn't break the bank eight per season two years basically guaranteed there christian wilkins so the big monster signing they want to get their chris jones right and christian christian wilkins other than chris jones where you know was really like i mean you could look at him just a matibuki at the top defensive tackles in free agency so christian wilkins a four-year 100 110 million dollar guarantee not all guaranteed but 84.75 of that is guaranteed it's a big deal but they needed interior help so bad i mean they were trying to move tyree wilson inside and maybe they want to do that on rushdowns anyway but i think that they were clearly saying to this like, we need help on the interior christian wilkins is going to do that and this signals to me they're not in a rebuild mode they're going to be looking to win right now so whichever quarterback they get or keep with Minshew and aoc who's going to be the starter they are looking to win which i love antonio pierce it's gonna be a fun season for the Raiders nice nice solid moves here I mean it's expensive there's a little bit of risk with that Christian Wilkins deal but I don't see why that he can't perform at a very high level on to the bolts of electricity and they kept the chill right they bring Gus Edwards in and I like that I think he's gonna be a nice power element for Jim Harbaugh Jim Harbaugh's keeping it chill on his first free agency thus far right it's still early but Gus Edwards he fits that mantra that power element I think that Jim's gonna instill with Roman oh yeah Greg Roman too so this is another stuff you know he goes you know with that familiarity there but and it's not gonna break the bank either pretty cheap deal Will Disley gets some nice blocking help Disley's a good blocking tight end three years 14 million dollars once again does not break the bank I'm okay paying that for a good solid blocking number two tight end and then finally Aloe Gilman from the going 
going back here to the Chargers, and I always call him Aloha, but Aloe Gilman, really, really good safety. He had a breakout year this season. But overall, I, I think Jim Harbaugh and this organization, solid start to the uh, team. It's still way too early. On to the NFC side, Dallas Cowboys. I'm sorry, there's nothing to talk about here. But, you know, maybe, you know, we'll talk about more later with that. New York Giants, we go on, and they get Devin Singletary. They sign him to a deal. We'll see what that deal ends up working out to be. But he definitely Singletary was really good for the Houston Texans this season. So I think, you know, you lose Saquon Barkley, you're probably getting Devin Singletary on a way cheaper deal. I'm okay with that. I think Singletary is a nice, solid back. You're probably going to be favoring towards the draft. Jermaine Illuminor signing a two-year, $14 million contract. Going to be competition for the right guard, right tackle position. And this one, to me, signals that they're not ready to give up on Evan Neal yet. But at the same time, like Jermaine Illuminor is going to be that nice push and at least rotational player. He was a rotational player with Ray Munford this season for the Raiders. But I think that with Illuminor coming in here, he kind of is that, you know, stable piece at that right tackle position while not breaking the bank and keeping Evan Neal around to maybe they trade him. Who knows? But I like the signing with Jermaine Illuminor. I think that's a really solid move for the team that he can also play right guard for them if they needed him to. Uh, but you figure on John Runyon will be the starting right guard. That's what you're figuring on. Illuminor, more than likely right tackle. Uh, John Runyon as the right guard. And that's your building your, your storm core onto the right side. And then, you know, JMS at the center position. You still have that left guard position potentially up for grabs. But the big signing here, Brian Burns, the, the trade. What a move. I'm so pumped for Giants fans. Great job by Joe Shane. I mean, I cannot say. You give up a second round pick and a fifth round pick. That's it. And yes, you got to give him $150 million. I'm fine with that. He's a beast, man. Brian Burns. Unbelievable, dude. I'm so excited for the Giants to have Brian Burns and KT off the edge. Aziz Ojolari as a situational player. Keep him healthy. Great move. I mean, it is expensive. There is risk behind this. I'm not going to say there isn't. But you basically traded Leonard Williams for Brian Burns, if you think about it, in a little bit more money. If you would have said, hey, we have to re-sign Leonard Williams after this season, we don't get our second round pick because we didn't, we didn't trade him, you still would have had to pay like $20 million for Leonard Williams. So instead, you trade him for basically Brian Burns and a fifth round pick and a little bit more money than what you have to give up for Leonard Williams. A plus move. Great thinking by Joe Shane. I love that. This is this is what I'm signaling. You get offensive line pieces. At least you're throwing pieces at it, you know? John Runyon's a capable right guard. He's not an elite right guard, but he's a good right guard. He's a good pass protector. Uh, Jermaine Illuminor, same thing. Good pass protector. He can, you know, kick you kick your butt to in the run game, especially in the power element. But yeah, I love this offseason from Joe Shane being real smart. I think he's done an A-plus type of offseason thus far. On to the Philadelphia Eagles, who steal Saquon Barkley, one of my favorite players. Barkley in the end. NFL. I'm going to be rude. But I'm, I'm not really an Eagles fan. Hey, I love every NFL team, but the Eagles always frustrate me for some reason. <laughs> anyway, Saquon Barkley, really good player. I'm, I'm stoked, man. I'm happy for Barkley. He's going to be a really fun addition for this team, and hopefully he could be like your Christian McCaffrey for the Niners. Three years, $37.75 million per even Rabinport, and you get your yourself that lead running back in this offense. Albert, oh, you get him on a one-year extension. Fine, get some depth. Landon Dickerson, he's gonna kick your freaking butt, man. I'm gonna, you better hope I never get back in there. That's the wrong team, Giants. Leonard, <laughs> where's LT? But Landon Dickerson's such a beast. Four years, $84 million extension that has a max of $87 million, $50 million guaranteed. That's a lot of money. I will say it is a lot of money for a guard. He's worth it, though. I mean, I do think he's worth it. Ideally, you can get him under that $20 million mark. At the same time, you know, at the going rate, he's going to be paid. And you get him extended now. Who knows what next offseason is going to look like for the guard money position, especially for a guy that is like an all-pro level and a Dickerson. Brandon Graham coming back on his final tour for the Philadelphia Eagles. I like that, of course. Bryce Huff. Stealing us from the Jets. I'm pissed off. This is why I hate the Eagles. You know, they always... Uh, <laughs> no, nah, it's okay. Bryce Huff. Huff and I'll puff and I'm going to blow your house down. Is a phenomenal pass rusher, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wishing him the best. I think he's going to be a beast for you guys. And it's well earned. Three years, $51.1 million. He's going to be a nice even Haas and Reddick replacement down the line, or at least with Nolan Smith, maybe they move him off to off-ball linebacker. I think that's a possibility too, but you add yourself another edge rusher. Overall, for Howie Roseman, I mean, they spent a lot of money. That's the only reason why I can't give this like an A-plus move, but I love some of the players that they brought back and or brought in. On to the Washington Commanders, and this is one where I think Adam Peters has done a great job. I am so impressed thus far. I feel like he got some really sneaky signings. 
in this one and also didn't break the bank or nothing like that and it was really smart so you start off with austin eckler two-year deal up to 11.43 million dollars not that expensive at all i know he's getting a little bit older and whatnot but what he wins at is in his receiving game and that's something that they need like you've got your tank in, in brian robinson b rob and now you add your receiving element you lose antonio gibson i think austin eckler is a phenomenal upgrade even there and that receiving role so for whoever your quarterback is after the draft Great job. There's a lot of confidence in Adam Peters after this. And, and Zach Ertz on a one-year up to $5 million deal. I don't know how much is guaranteed, but that's fine. I mean, he's still got something left in the tank. Obviously, injuries have caught up, but he's he's a nice tight end to bring in here, veteran leadership. Tyler Bidash from the Cowboys. You're stealing a couple of Cowboys, but Tyler Bidash, really nice center that's ascending, getting better. I mean, he's not an elite center, but I do think the sky's looking up for Tyler Bidash on a three-year, $30 million. And this doesn't signal that they're giving up on Stromberg because Stromberg can also play guard in my eyes. But I like that one. I think that's a nice move. Doris Armstrong, also from the Cowboys. I think this was a sneaky one as well because... Armstrong's a guy that I think he's a really good creative pass rusher, man. And somebody with his length and, you know, he's not a burner off the edge or anything like that. But, man, he knows how to win with those long arms. And I, I thought whoever's going to get Armstrong is going to get a steal. And, and I, $45 million for three years, I think that could be a steal for for a guy that might be able to put up 10 sacks a season. I really do think that. So, And then you finish it off with Frankie Louvu, three years, $36 million. One of the better linebackers in the NFL, an underrated linebacker, I should say, in the NFL. Very good player. You add him next to Jameen Davis, and that's a fun linebacking course. So I think that uh, this is a really nice start to the offseason for the Washington Commanders, and I'm excited going forward. On to the Chicago Bears, and it starts off with one of the first free agent signings in this it was DeAndre Swift who got a three-year, $24 million deal. I know that it didn't quite go over that well, and, and I get it. It's a running back position. You say, well, we're giving him $8 billion when we have Khalil Herbert. You got Roshan Johnson. We spent a third-round pick. I think this is exactly what they needed in the running back room, especially if you're bringing in Caleb Williams or whoever quarterback, you know, et cetera, or even if you're keeping Justin Fields. I think DeAndre Swift is a really good runner and also a guy that is a good receiving back, right? Yes, sometimes you, you're mad with him bouncing out plays, just take what's there, but you have guys for that. I think Swift will add that element of, of slasher into this offense and receiving element that maybe they don't have. So I think it was a good addition in that regard. And then Ryan Bates, good trade there for a fifth round pick. He gives you a lot of versatility in offensive lines. So I don't have a problem with that. It'll be a really nice swing player for them. And hopefully, you know, I mean, you add more here too. Uh, Jalen Johnson, a must three sign there. And actually, I thought it was a fair deal. So I'm, I'm cool with this four years, $76 million. I think that was a good team friendly-ish deal for the way he played, man. He is a phenomenal corner. And then you got Kevin Byard here on a two-year deal. This to me was a signal that him, you know, Eddie Jackson and the organization just maybe weren't getting along anymore and or Eddie Jackson just wanted to leave because it's kind of a similar mold or move in, in my way, in my view on it. But that's fine. Kevin Byard still, I think he's got something left in the tank and, and a solid free safety add-in with more of a box and Jaquan Bray. So I don't mind the fit. And then Patrick Scales as your long snapper. So far, the offseason from Ryan Pools hasn't been like super crazy to me. We'll see what they end up doing. Maybe they can go out and steal somebody else out there because they got some money. On to the Detroit Lions here. They get Graham Glasgow back on a three-year $20 million deal. It was less, or less than what I thought it was going to cost. So I love that. His versatility, only $9.5 million guaranteed as well. Marcus Davenport on a one-year deal. Hey, why not, right? I mean, he's been injury riddled, but he's still a good player and somebody that could be a number two edge at least with upside you still need to add to this position absolutely in the draft and that might be the direction that they end up leading but for me I don't mind doing this giving him a one-year deal that probably is not gonna be super expensive with his upside in your defense if it works out uh, Jalen Reese may have been a must do with his special teams and backup capability that he was able to do as a nice ferocious player there in that back end that linebacking core I love this move Carlton Davis a six-round pick yes you got to take well it's an exchange okay you get a six-round pick it's an exchange for a third round pick. I'm okay with that. I think Carlton Davis is a perfect scheme fit. And while you do have to give up in a, in a sense that you're going to have to pay him quite a bit of money, they have some cap space. And Carlton Davis, as I was saying, one of the best press man one on one corners. And what does Aaron Glenn like to do? He likes corners that can play up at the line of scrimmage and go one on one with dudes. And that is Carlton Davis to a T. So that is a A plus scheme fit for me. And the trade value, I think Carlton Davis. 
Davis is still one of the better corners, like I said, cover corners in the NFL. They got Emmanuel Bosley back too to give you at least some depth to compete. Hopefully he can get healthy and, you know, not tear, you know, he's been back-to-back -back ACL tear. That's unfortunate, but he's still got a lot of upside, man. He's a good football player when he's out there. Uh, Michael Badgley's back on a one-year deal. I know that doesn't instill maybe a whole ton of confidence. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe Dan Campbell have more confidence in him this year, but who knows? That's something we shall see. I give this offseason thus far, though, a pretty solid A, A minus. On to the Green Bay Packers, where they go get Josh Jacobs. Didn't expect this one. They also let go of Aaron Jones, I believe. So four years, $48 million. Not terrible. I mean, I thought it might be a little, who knows? I thought it could have been more expensive. That does include 12.5 signing bonus and a 14.8 in year one. So they're not like completely backloading it either, which is good for the Packers. You're that way, you you know, if Josh Jacobs, you know, struggles or whatever, you can get out of the contract a little bit quicker, probably within two years. Overall, Josh Jacobs is an elite running back. And for this Packers team, I think you have yourself a potential of way better run game this season or more consistent run game as long as you can stay healthy. Like Aaron Jones is a beast. It's just injuries have been the big thing for him. So Josh Jacobs makes a ton of sense. If he can stay out on the field, it's going to be a really, really nice running game. And you got your stud receivers. So I don't mind it. I really don't. Yeah, it's a little expensive for a running back. You say, do you pay a running back that much? That's going to be a question. But Josh Jacobs is a very talented player on to Xavier McKinney and they got him on a four-year $68 million deal it's a big deal I will say that in 28 million in year one I love it this is a team that's not backloading a ton of contracts they're basically saying hey we're gonna forward load these contracts and that way you know it's going down into the future years if we have to get out of these deals we can't so really smart by Brian Gutekunst while he's throwing a lot of money at these guys a lot of these are shorter term contracts in a way with how much money you're throwing at them early on and you can get out of them by year two if you need year three if you need to which is really smart in my view so I, I really think that's smart you know overall structure wise with that and Josh Jacobs Sabre McKinney are both phenomenal football players despite maybe the positional value thing getting thrown out there overall good a a off season so far from Brian Gutekunst and his Packers team on to the Minnesota Vikings and they get Johnny Munt nice blocking tight end number two number three tight end to have it's fine probably a cheap deal David Quisenberry some depth Jonathan Gennard is their big big I mean a couple of big signings here but Jonathan Gennard off the edge signals that they're going to end up losing to Neil Hunter but Jonathan Gennard with his speed and, and power off the edge I like this one a lot and he's been reliable too so I think that's something that they were looking at with Daniel Hunter is that reliability Jonathan Gennard maybe you can provide a little bit more reliability while also still being relatively productive of course and being hopefully a 10 plus sack guy and then you get Andrew Van Ginkle who was great for the Miami Dolphins this year we'll see how much money it is but a two-year deal I think him and Grenard are going to be really nice pass rushers in for this team. I'm not saying they're done at the edge position. They're probably still have to get somebody in the draft. Overall, it's a good help to this team that had basically nobody. DJ Woonham is also a free agent. And, you know, they lost Marcus Davenport, obviously, to the Lions. And then Blake Cashman comes in here on a three-year deal up to $25.5 million. He had a breakout year for um, the Houston Texans, and it's well-earned, man. He was so good this season. He really was. He flew all of the field, made so many big plays. So Minnesota, you now get your pairing along with Ivan Pace. And yeah, I, I don't mind that at all. I think that's a really good job for the Minnesota Vikings. Some expensive contracts out there, but you, you, you're able to fill some much-needed areas of importance for the team. I'm going to give that a nice solid A- minus offseason thus far. All right, we get into the Atlanta Falcons. Here we go. We talk about Kirk Cousins. Captain Kirk has a new home and he's going to Atlanta. I'm so excited, man. I know this is tough for the Minnesota Vikings fans to hear, but I think Kirk Cousins with Zach Robinson was the other fit. If he wasn't going to stay in Minnesota, he was going to come over to Atlanta and it all lined up and actually not as expensive that I thought he was going to be. I thought maybe he was going to get around that $50 million mark, around 45 per season, I think. And a hundred of that is fully guaranteed. And so basically it's about a two year deal overall I think it's a great move for the, the Atlanta Falcons because they might be saying to themselves look New England's pacing themselves to take one of those top three quarterbacks Washington is going to take a quarterback and maybe the Bears end up taking a quarterback so if the Atlanta Falcons are saying to themselves look we're going to have quarterback four on the board hey let's go get Kirk Cousins that's a better option than quarterback four and you know somebody that can start right away and we know Kirk Cousins is a solid quarterback a top 10 quarterback overall this does signal to me to the Falcons are going to be looking at an edge rusher and they're probably going to be in prime position to get the top edge rusher or at least one of the top edge rushers off the board at pick number eight or trade down who knows you never know what happens uh you bring your long snapper back which is good as well on to the Carolina Panthers I'm not very impressed with Tave Tepper I'm just going to say that right now thus far you're trading Brian Burns maybe he won't 
want it out and that's very possible okay we don't know behind the scenes what's going on there so you have to take that with a little bit of grain of salt they do get more draft capital i would have loved a first round pick for brian burns i'm surprised they couldn't get a first round pick however they did what they had to do you bring robert hunt in on a five-year 100 million dollar contract which is a lot of money, I will say, for a guard position. But Robert Hunt is one of the better guards in the NFL. And you got to protect Bryce Young, especially the interior, as I talk about. Being a smaller quarterback, the interior might take precedence even. So Robert Hunt, I don't mind it. It's a little expensive, but he's a really good player. And then you bring Troy Hill back on a one-year deal. It's fine. You bring your long snapper back, which is cool too. They, you know, they lose Frankie Louvu. Uh, they've lost Dante Jackson, I believe. Uh, so it's, it's going to be an interesting one for this team. It's still too early to tell, but right now I'm a little worried. I'm just going to, you know, be a little worried. I'm going to give it a C-plus offseason thus far. On to the New Orleans Saints. They've been really quiet thus far, bringing Demario Davis to a two-year deal. And then Tyron Matthew also signing a new two-year contract, getting those cap hits down. Both solid moves. They're both good players. Uh, they're getting a little bit older now, so I think they're reworking those contracts, which is really, really nice. And Mickey Loomis trying to get cheaper with the cap and stuff like that. So, fine. Good good solid start to the offseason they're gonna be very uh busy i'm sure in free agency on to the tampa Bay buccaneers and starts with baker mayfield i'm okay i was worried all right when i first think baker mayfield 40 million dollars when we're talking about him in the bucks video i'm like uh oh this could be 40 million dollars which was kind of my limit right i don't want to pay any more than 40 million dollars but to get him back on like a 33.33 whatever it is 334 what you know what i mean uh type of deal that's really good in my opinion. And it's only, you know, it's not a huge amount of guarantees. So you're getting Baker Mayfield basically on a two-year deal. And Baker Mayfield, while you might say, can he win you a Super Bowl? That's a good question. At the same time, I do think he is a legitimate starting NFL quarterback that could be a top 15 Jared Goff type of guy. If you have a good roster around him, I don't see why he cannot lead you to the promised land. You got to have a good roster around him. Like that just is what it is. But overall, he improved his decision making majorly this year. He looked like a legit top 15 quarterback. And you bring Mike Evans back on a two-year deal. You get your weapons, you know, with Chris Godwin back. Like, you have both of those guys at least under one more deal with Chris Godwin. So I'm expecting that, you know, so far, I think they're in a really good position. And, they, you know, bring Antonio Winfield back. You got your kicker back in McLaughlin, who's one of the better kickers in the NFL this season. Solid keeping your in-house guys thus far and maybe cheaper deals than what I thought it was going to be. So good job by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to give this a solid A offseason thus far. Final conference here. We go on to the NFC West. The Arizona Cardinals signed Tristan Colin Costello on a one-year deal. That's fine. He gives you depth at the center position and also guard. They need some depth. Uh, Justin Jones on a three-year deal, just a little over $30 million. Two years of that is basically guaranteed. He's a good interior player. He's a nice run defender, and that's what they need. They struggle stop in the run so justin jones gonna help you out majorly in that department mac mac wilson signed a three-year deal fine with that they need linebacker help pretty bad so mac wilson is going to certainly help them out in that regard and he gets his chance too so he's looking for an opportunity to start and he will get his chance here with kazir white and then sean murphy bunting i love this signing three years 25.5 million dollars i think he's going to be a really nice addition for them and much needed secondary help they need cornerback i mean they're still won't be done like they're, they're going to need to go out this in the draft too but for the cardinals nice solid off season they have more money too but they're being patient and i respect that on to the los angeles Rams. Well, they went pretty heavy here, and they got Demarcus Robinson back on a one-year deal worth up to $5 million. Great move. All right, he was a really nice backup, right? When they had injuries with, you know, Nakua or Cup, Robinson stepped up majorly, especially at the end of the season. Kobe Parkinson comes in here. Look, it is a little expensive for Parkinson, but at the same time, like, I see the upside, and I, I think he does have a lot of untapped potential kind of buried behind the Seahawks' depth chart. But I think Kobe Parkinson could be a really nice starter for this team, at least, you know, with Tyler Higby and his injury. I think Colby Parkinson can step up there. So it is a little bit of money, but overall, it's a basically a two-year guaranteed deal. And somebody, if nothing else, will be a nice number two tight end for the team. And then he spent some big money. Got Kevin Dotson, worth that. I mean, he was phenomenal. He stabilized his offense along with Steve Avila, too. And then they signed Jonah Jackson. They weren't done. They gave him a $51 million deal over three years. And they actually gave him more guarantees, which you figure on, you know, it's it's cheaper to bring your own guys back typically. I would rather pay Kevin Dotson more money, I'll be real. But Jonah Jackson is a good left guard. And, and this signals to me that Steve Avila is moving inside to center. So now you're going to have Jonah Jackson at left guard, Steve Avila at center, and Kevin Dotson on the right guard position. That is a fun interior offense line that is going to kick some serious butt. I'm going to tell you right now, like this is a mean mug and offensive interior that is going to plow over dudes in the run game. Watch out for Kyron Williams next year. 
just saying that right now. But it's a lot of money, and it's it's clearly what Sean McVay is prioritizing and protecting Matthew Stafford, which is huge, right? You need to do that. And then on to the San Francisco 49ers, and they bring in Brandon Allen back, which is fine. We'll see if they bring Sam Donald back or not. Uh, Colton McKivix comes back on a one-year deal. It's interesting how they structured it. I think it's only 3.5, and then you have incentives, but it, it is kind of funny the way they put it into another year. I, I don't know. Who knows? Sometimes these structures are a little funny. But Colton McKivix gives you inside out versatility. I imagine that this signals to me that he, he's going to be a backup going into next year, if possible. Like they're going to draft somebody early. That's really what it signals to me. And then finally, you get Leonard Floyd probably also signals that they're going to end up letting go of Chase Young. Who knows? But I think with their cap situation, surprising moves, of course, with Eric Armstead now out the door and potentially even use check. I think he's going to take a pay cut, but you got to keep use check around. Overall, Leonard Floyd comes in there as that number two edge rusher, and he's a sack artist, right? He really is. And he's, he's a good sack artist to have, and that was something at the end of the season they struggled with, right? And it's one of the reasons why they let go of Eric Armstead, and they just didn't quite get enough production out of those guys when it mattered. So I expect Leonard Floyd to give him some more help in that department. Two-year, $20 million deal that's worked up to $24 million. I don't mind it. It's basically a one-year guaranteed deal, and you have yourself hopefully a good pairing along with Nick Bosa off the edge. Not my favorite signing, but a solid move. I think the 49ers are going to have to be pretty strategic about a lot of these signs with a very limited cap space. But overall, B type of offseason. Last but not least, the Seattle Seahawks, which I just noticed after an update. They signed Noah Fan to an extension, a two-year deal, $21 million. So they lost Kobe Parkinson. They lost Will Disley. But at least you get back Noah Fan. And I still think there's a lot of untapped potential for Noah Fan. So I don't mind this one at all. I think the price point is fair. I think $10 million. I don't know how much of that is guaranteed. But overall, I think that Noah Fan is still a really solid starting tight end with upside, too. I mean, the athleticism that he has is, you know, you're not going to find very often from tight ends. I mean, he's a really good athlete at, at the position. So uh, definitely a nice signing for the Seattle team after losing two tight ends. Probably still going to have to go out in the draft or some more free agent depth here. But you did lose Jordan Brooks, which is a tough one. I was just looking at with the Miami Dolphins. They lost him on $10 million per season, $30 million over three years, which was interesting that the Hawks couldn't bring him back for that price point. I overall it is what it is and no fan a nice addition to be back here for the seattle seahawks so that is going to do it here free agency day number one let me know what you think who are your biggest winners who are your biggest followers but as of right now i know by the time i upload this there'll probably be some more crazy changes and stuff like that but anyway we'll have to do another update maybe tomorrow or sometime here later this week in a mock draft too so i'm excited for that but i hope you guys have a really cool day and my name is Sling. i'm doing my thing i'll talk to you later